Hi, I'm Jeff Kozlerik, Advertising and Communications Manager for Faruna USA. Thanks for joining us in this continuing video on waypoints and routes with your Navnet 3D system. This video will go more in-depth in the menu system and how to do certain things with your routes such as add legs, delete legs, split the route, and we'll even talk about naming it and deleting it. For the waypoints, we'll get more in-depth with how to put the waypoints in the system, the different ways of doing that. We'll talk about renaming and deleting those as well. So let's get started. I'm going to turn this over to Matt Wood. Thank you, Jeff. In this video, we're going to be dealing with points and waypoints. We'll learn how to enter points, how to edit them, how to work with them. And just a note for you about the term points. In the past, you may have heard terms like waypoint or route. Here, we're going to use points and waypoints interchangeably. A point may be exactly that. It may be a waypoint, or in fact, it may be a mark. So we'll take a closer look at entering points and how to make them look and name them exactly the way we want them to appear on screen. When we're entering our points and routes, traditionally there have been two ways of entering that information, either graphically, meaning from the screen that we're working on, or numerically. For the sake of the discussion in this video, most of what we're going to be doing is entering points and our routes and working with those points and routes graphically on the screen of Navnet 3D. We'll also give a couple of brief examples about how to do this numerically or in the menu system. Perhaps the easiest way to create a point in a Navnet 3D operational screen is simply by using a single button with a short press on the keyboard. I select my cursor and select any point on the screen that I, where I want to create a point. I use a short press of my points and route button to create that point we can see this point appear immediately. The point is immediately named with the next number in the numerical sequence based on points that have been selected previously. Now there are a number of things that we can do with this point as well. You'll see as I operate my cursor and come, into the, and come onto the point that the point highlights or pops or gets fat. As soon as I hover my cursor over the point, we'll see a small data box pop up and that contains the name of the point and the range and bearing to that point from my current boat position. If I hover the cursor over the point again and use a left click of my mouse, I now can obtain all of the object detail of that point, including the name, any comment, the range and bearing, depth, temp, and any group or additional data that I've entered about that point. There are several other ways that we can enter points as well, in addition to simply using the points button. This can be done using our cursor pad and right click function, or our USB mouse. I'll simply bring my cursor on screen and right click. The fourth item down is new point. If I then left click on new point, I create the next numerical point here. Again, if I hover my cursor, I can get a short data box with information about that waypoint, and by left clicking I can obtain all of the information. So now that we have a couple of points to work with, let's take a look at the information that can be accessed about those points and what we can do with them. Again, you'll notice when I hover my cursor over a point, I get the data box. Now instead of a left click, if I right click, I'm given several menu options. Move, go to, edit, rename, and delete. Perhaps the easiest, would be to delete this waypoint. I simply hover my mouse, left click, and I've deleted that point. If I right click again on the next point in sequence, let's take a look at the move function. To move a waypoint, I simply right click on that point, select move as a left mouse click, and move that point anywhere I want on screen. It will immediately remove the point from its original location and drop it on the new point. One of the things that you'll notice here as well is that I have some on-screen help. You'll see that the top menu bar says move object, push roto key to validate. So in fact, I do have an on-screen indication of the function that I'm performing. 
There's another very important button that we can use to create points as well, and that's the Save and MOB button. In working with the Save MOB button, it's important to draw the distinction between the Points button and the Save button. When we're using our Points button, or right-click feature on either of our mice, it's important to note that the point that is created is at the point of the cursor. When we use the Save button, a save point is created under our own vessel position, as is a man overboard position. To use the Save feature, all I do is a simple short press of the Save button. That creates a point directly under my own vessel position that I can go back and work with later. A press and hold of the same button for approximately two seconds gives us an MOB or man overboard point. You can see that my screen automatically scales to the appropriate chart scale to navigate to that waypoint. Again, the man overboard point will remain as the primary go-to waypoint until it's removed using the menus. When we've created a point that's assigned a numerical value, very often it's important for us to be able to rename or change the attributes of that point. We'll look at a couple of different ways of doing this. Taking my mouse and hovering, I right click. I have two related but separate functions that appear in this menu, edit and rename. Let's deal briefly with renaming because this may be the most used feature of the point menus. I right click, I select rename, and I'm given a short dialog box so that I can change the name of this point. I can change this name by scrolling the wheel of my USB mouse. I can use the roto key on the Navnet 3D keyboard, or as we indicated earlier, an external keyboard is extremely important and extremely useful in renaming these waypoints. Once we have our dialog box open, it's easy enough for me to use the keyboard to rename it virtually any name I want, up to a 14 character limit. I simply right click, select rename, and since we're here in the Columbia River by Faruna, USA, this is a great salmon fishing hole. So I'll call this point Salmon. Once I've typed in the name of the waypoint, I can either select enter on my keyboard or a simple enter twice on my roto key and now I've changed the name of that waypoint. That waypoint will now be available in, in, alpha, in alphabetical order in our list. The last feature of the right-click menu that we'll deal with is that of editing points, which gives us access to changing more attributes than just the name. I simply hover cursor over my point and right-click. I now left-click on Edit, which brings up my menu. Again, our default menu item here is our alphabetical list. I can also select my local list or my group list. We see here that the attributes to be changed are position, the name of the point, the symbol, as well as the color, the group, if we choose to assign these points to groups, the depth of the point, which is recorded automatically, the water temperature is recorded automatically as well, the avoidance circle area, or the waypoint or point arrival circle can be adjusted here, and we can also enter a brief comment in the final data box. To change position, either using our USB mouse or using the roto key, I simply enter, and that advances my cursor position to one set of numbers. I can change this set of numbers. Subsequent presses of the roto key advance me to change additional numbers, as well as changing north or south latitude and west or east longitude. Anytime I wish to back up, it's as simple as pushing the cancel key to back me up in that sequence. I continue pressing the roto key to advance through that menu feature. At the end of that, it pops me back into my position editing. Now, either advancing to the right or to the left on the roto key enables me to change these different attributes. The name is fairly self-explanatory. That can be changed, again, up to 14 characters. The point symbol, if we access the list of point symbols, you'll see a number of different icons. Those icons are as broad as fish or crab, hangs or other obstructions, as well as common chart features that you may use as attributes for naming your points and your routes. Point color, you have a choice of red, yellow, green, cyan or light blue, a purple, dark blue, or white. 
After changing the color of the point, the icon, and the other information, we may choose to assign the point to a group. Assigning a point to a group is as simple as selecting this from a drop-down menu here in our group item. I select my drop-down. The groups that I can choose from are fishing, navigation, danger, and entertainment. So it's easy enough to assign these points into these groups for immediate access so that I don't have to look at my entire list of points. Let's look at other ways to create points real briefly here. One of the great things about the Navnet 3D keyboard and the additional mouse or keyboard that I can use is that of the right click feature. Simply by grabbing my right click, I have access to creating a new point, a new waypoint, or a new route. We'll take a look at how that's done briefly. I use my cursor pad or my mouse to select where I'd like the boat to go. When I right click, I have menu options of go to, go to by position, a new point, a new route, or in fact I can center on the boat. There's another menu item there that'll be the subject of another video. In this case, I'll simply select a new point, and again, I've created a new point on the location of the cursor. In addition to creating a new point from our right-click menu using cursor, we can also right-click and create a simple go-to point. It's important to note that a go-to point is a temporary point. It is not a point that is saved in memory unless we go back and rename it. I simply take my cursor, select the point on screen that I'd like to proceed to, right-click, and select go-to. The go-to will automatically scale my chart to an appropriate scale for that point and give me my steering information. Deleting that is done in the same method as before, right click and cancel route. In addition to creating a go to point from our right click menu, we can also use go to by position. Go to by position is extremely handy if somebody's calling me on the radio to join them fishing, join them for other boating activities, or if I'm given information by authorities to proceed out of harm's way. In this case, I'll grab my cursor and right click. My third item is go to by position. When I select enter using the roto key or my mouse, I'm given a data box asking me to validate the position. Note that this position immediately is the position of my cursor on screen. I use the roto key to advance through those numbers create my go-to position, and I'm given that route and steering information. When we're working with moving an existing point, one thing that's very easy to do is to move it to a GPS lat long that we're given by the radio by using a simple visual indication on screen. You'll notice that in the upper right-hand corner, we have a cursor position box. If I hover cursor and select Move from my menu, I can immediately start moving my cursor and we'll see in the cursor position box an indication where the point will be moved to. I select the point that I wish and simply left click to move the point to that position.